Warm greetings and pleasant morning to all the dignitaries who are present here virtually. This COVID-19 pandemic situation has shattered our schedules. It has crushed our earlier teaching strategies and mentoring structures. Even then, our focus has not changed. Our thirst for growth has not changed. So, to help the teaching fraternity, an international webinar on psychosocial resilience of teaching community is organized by the Department of Commerce of the Standard Fireworks Rajaratnam College for Women, Devahasi. To start with, I request our Honorable Head of the Department, Dr. N. Rajatilakam, to deliver the welcome address. Thank you, ma'am. Very good morning to Mananda. Celebrating the proud and glorious Ruby Jubilee year, I, on behalf of PG and Research Department of Commerce, extend a hearty and warm welcome to all of you for this webinar on Psychological Social Resilience of the Teaching Community. In those days, people suffered physically and mentally by crossing the age of 70. But even at an early age, people suffer from health problems due to stress. Every day, everyone is facing a lot of stress in their workplace, in home also. So especially in pandemic periods also, they are all more stressful. I hope that the tips given by our expert will be very useful to strengthen our mind and body to lead a stress-free life in the present scenario. In this occasion, I am delighted to welcome Mr. Sasigaran Moniam, Director, Center for Language and General Studies, University Pendikon, Sultan Idris, Tanjang Moling, Tarak, Malaysia, who joined us today to deliver inaugural address despite his busy schedule. I welcome you, sir. And I extend my hearty welcome to our guest speaker, Mr. B. Jayakumar, MHM, International Hospital and Healthcare Management Consultant, Associated with Units of Aster DM Healthcare Private Limited, Nigeria, for accepting our invitation and making his presence to address us on the topic Psychological Social Resilience of the Teaching Community. I welcome you, sir. Welcome, man. Thank you. Thank you. We are also extremely grateful to our management and senior faculty members and Madam Principal for their constant support and meticulous guidance in all our endeavors. I also welcome our Madam Principal and senior members, Mr. Rajeshwari, Mr. K. Rajeshwari, for this speech. Welcome you, ma'am. I am very pleased to welcome the Professor of Professor Dr. Saurani, Associate Professor and Head, Department of Chemistry, who always marching towards for the welfare of the students and department. I welcome you, ma'am. Thank you. I extend my deep appreciation to uh, the for the last 20 days and bringing into this year successful one. And also, welcome you, ma'am. And also, thank our secretary, Vidishwari, and thank you for arranging this for providing technical help. Once again, I extend a warm welcome to each and everyone to this auspicious meet. Welcome you all for this meeting. 
thank you ma'am now i welcome our senior professor mrs m sautamani head associate professor of chemistry to deliver the presidential address thank you good morning to all respected principal madam respected resource persons of today's webinar conveners former hod of thomas department dr rajeshwari organizers and participants i feel immense pleasure in delivering the presidential address to this one day international webinar on psycho social resilience of the teaching community organized by the pg and research department of commerce on the eve of their ruby jubilee celebration so what is resilience resilience is simply elasticity it is the capacity to recover from or to adjust the difficulties toughness or from stress so it is the ability to recover from setbacks adapt well to changes etc so throughout the career the teachers encounter many situations that generate conflict and stress if not managed productively conflict and stress can affect our physical health psychological well being possibly leading to changes in self esteem altered patterns of sleeping eating depression declining job satisfaction and increased vulnerability to illness therefore a teacher resilience ability is needed to adjust the varied situations and increase one's competence in the face of adverse conditions competence and adverse conditions teaching is a profession full of changes these changes can be within or out of our control so, so resilience is a skill we have to learn and develop so our resilience is highly related on our relationship having a good social support network increases our resilience to stress as well as improving our physical and mental health we can do this usually by spending time by talking to our colleagues seniors supporting others helping others and their work these are the things usually we do to re release our stress so apart from this we are having still more methods or ways for teachers resilience so when we teachers are increasingly busy resilience equips us with the ability to cope up with stress so a teachers resilience is a necessary condition for the effectiveness of a teacher so especially in this covid 19 situation and after effect we are going to meet the students the teachers may get stressed by online classes and some unusual way of teaching and evaluation methods so the various ways of resilience as instructed by our resource persons will surely make us a phoenix bird in this situation for the well being of our institution and to our family so as you said in your in invitation so you may be the best in your profession but sometimes the stress of the job can take a toll on you so without resilience you are at risk of burning out so building your res professional resilience and you will set yourself up to succeed so the topic of today's webinar is the need of our for our teaching faculty so thank you organizer for choosing the right topic for this hour wish you a success in this venture thank you thank you so much ma'am now i request dr m jagadishwari assistant professor of commerce to introduce our international resource person mr sasegaran maniam to our teaching community good morning to all it's been a great pleasure to introduce a dynamic personality in our international webinar today mr sasegaran maniam the director of center for language and general studies in university pendidikan sultan ibris of malaysia he is the language instructor of upsi the southern form of university pendidikan sultan ibris malaysia and also holds the directorship of sevclads malaysia he had completed his b.a with honors and m.a at upsi this is a public university in the town of tanjung island 
our dynamic personality is actively involved in various projects and programs under the ministry of higher education this strenuous efforts in the field of education is reflected in his setting up of offshore upsi centers in china uzbekistan and middle east countries above all apart from long range planning and networking jobs he also takes interest in teaching english at tertiary level tertiary level and has many years of experience in it his in interest in research field is reflected in language proficiency language pedagogy csl methodology clt and language skills apart from this curricular fields he is the advisor of international conference on creative teaching assessment and research in english language and has also co-chaired the first asian elt conference in malaysia you are need much honor to have such an eminent dynamic personality amongst us today to inaugurate function please sir so thank you i am uh, mr sasigaran moniam from uh, Kanekan Sultan Idris. So, so currently I am working as the director for Center for Language and General Studies. So, uh, the topic presentation today will be COVID in new normal of teaching and learning. So, so I will do my presentation now. Hello. Sir, voice is not available. Hello. So is it? Yeah, I think due to the connection. Yeah. Uh, so, see the slide. Yes, sir. You have started your presentation. Yeah. Yes, I'm going to start my presentation. So, uh, can you see the slide? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. My presentation uh, will be uh, discussing on the issues of. in pandemic the new normal in learning so basically so uh, so what we face this um, this, uh, this pandemic so the last is never the same so uh, we have all of thing and things so we have been facing a lot of lockdown and friction and everything so that's so the new normal of teaching and the same so uh, to begin with our education so that we For centuries, all education system has been changed. Uh, so, due to the crisis uh, on certain countries, Malaysia. So, basically, we did focus on a lot of face-to-face -face, uh, teaching, but now, so we move on to e-learning and then uh, remote distance learning and things like that. So, in terms of education, there's a lot of changes now, as you can see. First, basically. Campus, we can accommodate about uh, accommodate about five thousand students, but all the students are at home, and then the campus are basically empty. So these are the changes in terms of uh, higher education landscape, and then uh, we do have a lot of uh, foreign students in the here at the moment. So the number uh, uh, of course there is a restriction. of borders and everything i think this simply apply to other countries as well especially in to india as well so i uh, mean in terms of the paradigm shift so really we been um, so this is the theory which move from this and then currently so we are pressing the new methods um, of teaching so just the trap so there are three aspects We need to consider in terms of facing this um, COVID-19 teaching and learning. The one is the higher education delivery. So the first one is the challenge emergency remote teaching. So as I con all the uh, as in countries and then uh, most of the, the Western countries we face uh, basically we practice. Face to face method. So most, for example, even in Malaysia, for example, normally face to 
it would be 60% on the 40% winning session. Due to COVID-19, so there is an emergency to conduct remote. So we move on from the practice of 60% are face to face, we move on to 100% so on uh, to online remote teaching methods. And, uh, the another thing that we need to uh, put into consideration is the assessment limitation. So before this, so we can base on paper and uh, kind of methods, so basically face to face nation practices, but moment, so we are depending um, on online explanations, uh, basically. Is online. So, in terms of the quality, in terms of the uh, uh, effect, assessment is the big question as, as well. And then uh, nothing that we need to consider as well is uh, learning curves. Uh, our teachers and the students are willing to learn the new normal of teaching and learning, or are they willing to learn? These are the things that we need to consider at the institutional levels. Regardless whether it's in the uh, and um, of course to institution as well, for example in Malaysia when uh, we implemented the uh, emergency remote learning uh, practices so basically the university back course was able to uh, send books, uh, materials for students who are having problem in uh, to get good connectivity in of internet and then uh, for the government uh, for the government themselves so basically the government upgrade telecommunication towers and uh, etc to enable the students to uh, access online materials and then by all these um, high education delivery uh, uh, things that we need to consider the other much more important thing that we need to consider this pandemic period is the life and life seal family uh, the students uh, teachers and learners as well so as as far as considering the lockdown or the students the teachers and then uh, being uh, isolated alone uh, and then affected by the low mental health because as we uh, globally globally so when we read we read news and the articles and that's, so there are cases in which uh, teachers or so teachers, even in fact I think in India there are cases with suicide due to uh, unable uh, to uh, you know, participate in online tests on uh, examination things like that so he, as, as far as I concern so we humans are created as a social creature and then we cannot live alone so this uh, pandemic had created a situation in uh, in a way that those who are single and those who are without family, so they need to spend their time for most of the time to isolation and loneliness, and it will create a big impact in terms of mental health. And then in terms of education, so it will basically, it will uh, decrease the participation of the students uh, and etc. And then uh, during this uh, pandemic seasons as well, so basically, uh, he, he become aware, it was uh, become prevalent that uh, the financial burdens, financial burdens increase, and then many people, many parents lost their jobs, and etc. In, in, in return, so with the children, the children uh, could not continue their studies, and then they cannot perform uh, well in academically due to these financial burdens because as we education, uh, need uh, financial support in terms uh, for us to continue things like that and then as well so basically uh, we teachers we teachers uh, I think if, if you ask me personally I, I prefer face-to-face -face, uh, interaction because in face-to-face -face interaction so we can deliver whatever information whatever thoughts whatever discussion directly and then we can share the material as well but when you uh, talk about Online materials. So basically, when you talk about online materials, we need to we need to prepare beforehand, and uh, it will take it will take a lot of Hello? time. Ah, yes. Uh, you only another part of the man. No, I'm not being put it there again. I'm not a check panel. The mute is like a very panama trangla. I'm not a somebody. Yes. So basically, the, the juggling multiple role as a teacher. So before this. Uh, 
um, for example, at school, teaching the students, but now at home, they need to take care of their children, they need to take care of their husband, and then at the same time, they need to conduct their online teachings. Even all the teachers who are basically a parents, who are basically a wife or husband, so it will, in a way, it will affect their livelihoods as well. And then working from uh, home, basically, with uh, uh, enough uh, technology connectivity and then uh, as, as as far as i concern as well most of the countries in the world so they have problems in uh, providing the necessity technologies like gadgets things like that to their uh, citizens and then uh, in terms of physical space if you are living in a house and then let's say there are three children who are, who are, who are basically joining the online classes so you just imagine so how many uh, laptops you need, how many uh, smartphones that you need, and then there's no physical spaces for uh, or to be in their own room uh, uh, teaching and learning test. And then another important thing that we need to reflect as well, so in terms of the reflect the future. So what will be the new normal in higher education? How we are going to cope with normal? of changing so basically um, when when we talk about education is highly uh, related to uh, employability so due to this uh, uh, COVID situation so basically some of these uh, learning institutions they have postponed their examination public examination to next year or end of the year in which in a way it will affect the employability of the um, future relevant as well and then apart from that be mentally and physically ready right? and so because uh, this is related to final and then the juggling multiple role as be physically and mentally ready to face because the world has never been the same again right so we are after 2020 the world has changed forever and then uh, it's important to focus as well on the government's role as well so like for example in so the government issues so will be uh, they are provided uh, financial assistance uh, to every citizens who are, who are in need and then uh, also the government has been channeling um, uh, cash amount to those who in need and then uh, they've been upgrading the facilities uh, and a lot of uh, other things so the government's rules as uh, important as well in terms of this and then we need to understand the uh, uh, the fact that education is very important in terms of securing employability and financial stability. So, but we need to uh, know whether this is our future. So, basically, education uh, impacted um, statutory. So, basically, we need uh, they'll be employer employment in the future because, as far as we concern, many companies, uh, many workplaces has been closed down due to. Um, uh, financial problem and the bankruptcy and then uh, so we need to think whether we need to prepare to embrace this new future and then to move on so basically as a teacher in education there are four things that we need to do and then four things that we need to understand first thing is that so we need to understand that we need to be the design of facilitator in classroom or because basically now the classroom is in virtual is basically virtual there's no physical classroom so basically we need to be the design and facilitator not the stage of the stage so before this everything may be teacher centered but now everything need to be student centered so we need to empower the children the students or the undergraduates or postgraduate with the necessity or necessary information uh, venues for them to succeed the second thing is that we need to learn the old habits and acquire new skills on, on learning engagement. So as far as I teach, for certain people, they might think that well, I am going to retire in two years' time, things like that, so why I should learn this new online or not. But as a teacher, so we need to improve ourselves because we are, we, we are depending on lifelong learning, things like that, and the teachers and educators to learn new skills. Right. As far as I concern, India is basically in terms of technology, 
technology. So in term of the uh, people who are experts in technology are basically many of them are from India. So I think uh, you guys have the benefit in term of learning online learning uh, to to uh, to basically equip yourself with the necessary knowledge of the new new. And then another important thing that we need to understand as well is that one size fits all curriculum not work for all learners. When we are in the classroom, so we can basically we can identify students based on their performance, based on their uh, based on their marks and things like that. But now due to this virtual, because we, sometime when we like, for example, when we do Google Meet or Zoom, the, the students will not on their camera, and we didn't know in their in basically what that. So we teachers we need to review our as basically to ensure that no one will left behind because for as 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 far education concerns so everybody should get the benefit everybody should get the same level of approach and the same level of benefits so we need to be as a teacher or educator we need to make sure that our curriculum our process should reach everybody regardless whether they are poor or rich and then most importantly, number four is we need to change. Change requires sacrifice. We as a teacher, we need to uh, we need go out from our comfort zone. So we cannot simply say that. So uh, it's not my problem if this uh, read through internet things like this. So we need to reach the students. So that is our role. So as a, as a teacher, we need to change our mindset. We the way we then. Uh, in a way, so uh, in a way, positive uh, change uh, physically, mentally. So I believe that we will be able to cope with the new normal of teaching and learning. So with that, I wish uh, all the best to everybody. So thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Hi, this one. Kindly mute your audio and also your video. There is a lot of disturbance out there. In the YouTube link, they are not able to hear the voice clearly. So, participants, kindly mute your audio and also videos. Also, you can stop. Uh, sir, Jake Ma, sir, a kind request to you. Can you use your headphone or earphone, sir? Because yeah. your voice is not audible the YouTube link. Yeah. Message now it is audible. Voice. Now it is audible. Now it is audible. Yeah, I think it's clear now. Yeah, it has to be. It has to be. Okay. I have unmuted my. I I now request the sound star to introduce our cheapest. I'm all to you now. Good morning. Once again, I'm very happy to introduce the chief guest, Mr. B. J. Kumar. He is an excellent international hospital and healthcare management consultant associated with the units of Aster DM Healthcare Private Limited, Nigeria. He is an expert in establishing world class diagnostic centers and has established 15 eye care centers in four states of Nigeria, Lagos, Kaduna, Kano, and Katsina. He is an international speaker and has presented many lectures in various medical colleges and professional forums. He has received several awards for his achievements in the medical field. Some of them are he has received the Jewel of India Award for his outstanding achievement in medical tourism by Indian Solidarity Council, New Delhi, and has received Gold Star Excellence Award and Rajiv Gandhi Excellence Award from International Business Council, New Delhi. As Chief Operating Officer of International Operations, he functioned in several hospitals like Wasan Eye Care Hospital, Madurai. Sukhdevad Joint Hospital, Faridabad, Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, Lagos, Aster Adar Hospital, Kolhapur, Skipper IQ Hospital, Nigeria. He also has received professional affiliation from 
American Health Information Management Association and IHA Michigan. Being graduated B.Sc. Chemistry from A.J. College, Sivahasi and post-graduated M.H.M. from Madurai Kamaraj University, Madurai, he has reached greater heights as an administrator, a collaborator and a trainer. We are very happy to have him amidst today. We welcome you, sir, and now the session is yours. Thank you very much, Amnista. Thank you very much. Uh, my presentation, you want to share it on the screen, uh, moderators? My presentation, moderators, can you hear me? Vijayshri, are you ready to present the screen, sir? No, no, it's okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Just a minute, ma'am. I'm opening. Yeah. yeah. The, the one, one which I sent recently. Okay. Yeah. So, Mr. Can you hear me? Well, I'm I'm audible. I'm audible, right? Yes. Thank you. So, so good morning, morning everyone, everyone once again. again. Respected dignitaries, uh, respected principal of the esteemed uh, Sandy Firex Rajaratnam College. I am really happy, it's a proud privilege for me to address this wonderful international uh, teaching faculties. A lot of eminent teachers, doctorates, professors, school teachers, college teachers, all are here. My but yes, I mean, thanks to the Christopher College faculties, especially economics department, and especially I must thank the minister for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts, to share my views in this uh, in this vital pandemic situation. Hello. Yeah. So as it is well said that uh, resilience, resilience is very important now. And uh, without resilience, people will perish. So the topic given to me is psychosocial resilience of the teaching community. So I'm waiting for the presentation. Can I or can I start it from here? Moderators? Hello? Or can I? Please wait for a few seconds. Jishi is trying. Okay. Because or else I can also do that. It is here. Okay, let's not waste the time. Let's hear. Yeah, it's here. Can you see the presentation now? Yes, sir. Your presentation has started. Okay. Okay. So, right. My screen is there. Yes. Okay, good. So let's start with the presentation. It is well said that uh, any profession is noble, but the teacher's profession is the noblest of all. You know why it is? Because, you know, we are all here because of our teachers, isn't it? Hope you agree with me. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Yes, you are audible. You can proceed, sir. Okay, you can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay. So, as I said, I'm here because of the various floggings given by my teacher, my school teacher. I still remember my school teachers starting from LKG up to even PG level, university level, even in American college, in in Sirkasi AJ College, because teachers are unique. Teachers are unique problem solvers by character, temperament, and resilience, right? Teachers cannot be manufactured. So once again, uh, I think, uh, I mean, some audio is open. It is disturbing me. Could you please mute that? Yeah. Hello. If you are audible, you can proceed. Yeah. yeah. So as I often said, 
Oh my God. What happened? Participants, don't uh, press the present now button. It's okay. Can you present it once again, sir? So should I need to present once again? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. If you are able to see the presentation, you can proceed, sir. We can present it. We can able to see the. I'm not going to present my screen. Yes. We are able to see your third slide, sir. Third slide, right? Yes. Okay. Good. So, what is resilience? It's, it is. It has been told by our introductory speakers very well, and also in the welcome address. See, the simple understanding of resilience in this current situation is. It's the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties or adjust easily to change. This process is called bounce back. We rebound. We rebound back. When teachers notice a need and act in response to the need, they send a powerful message to a student: "You are worthy of my time and effort." So please, my dear profession professional teachers. You can very well take it for granted, and you should feel proud of you are sharing your time, energy in making the pillars of the nation. So, for you, for you, all must bow down, bow down, and should respect your noble profession. So, there are a lot of psychosocial challenges. There are a lot of psychological challenges, social challenges for you, and especially during this time of exigencies. or this kind of pandemic situations you definitely have a lot of challenges hope you agree with me so understanding resilience for the better let's see can you see the fourth slide can yes okay resilience is is never giving up even when things get tough you know there is a famous saying i still remember whenever i am entering into my hospital doing various situations of labor issue labor union issue patient related issues patient staff issues doctor staff communication i always remember this statement very well but the going gets tough the tough gets going so resilience is never giving up even when things get tough trying even if you are not sure you will succeed doesn't matter you should never give up the courage to come back from failure getting back up again when you have been knocked down you see there are so many stories in the history my dear friends people winners never quit and quitters never win so your job you are doing it is a second home for you like be it a school be it a college be it a university it's like a second home for you so various challenges when you are facing you should not give up never ever give up okay as i said resilience is defined as the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties and toughness but resilience is needed for all human beings irrespective of gender occupation and age as well okay some common factors that affect the teaching community or as follows and you are well aware of this hope you all agree with me the stress due to the pressure given by management expectation of students and their parents and faculty management time constraints they have quality time with their own children family related issue personal health issue own expectations on performance related issues okay so by audible yeah you can all hear me right yes i can hear you Okay, okay. Because I, I, I'm getting a pin drop silence. I don't know to whom I'm addressing. I'm getting lost. That's right. At least uh, one moderator. At least one. Yeah, one moderator. You can keep your microphone open and be with me. Okay. Okay. One, only one person. Tanmista, is it okay for you? Yes, sir. Okay. So I am done with the fifth slide. Okay. Now going from six. I'm not going to read it out. I'm going to just uh, tell, uh, I mean, uh, inform the highlighted topic. See, what are the various challenges you are facing now? Lack of teamwork, empathy, and support between students. Teachers working too many roles at the same time. See, these things we can we can we see from our school days onwards. How our teachers are given excessive assignments by the headmasters, by the principal, 
buy the poor workers or some other uh, I mean, social activities like unions. They have been engaged in a lot of other work. Okay. So, these are some of the challenges. No time to deal with bodily functions. In many, many areas, in many remote villages or remote, I mean, tier 3, tier 4 towns and all that, all throughout the day, teachers must jump from one task to the next and are often forced to in their own body. There are no bathrooms or water, water breaks for teachers. I'm not saying it is for all. It is, it is some remote places. They're also human beings, right? Sometimes they don't have a lunch break at all. They have to have a quick grab. It happens in some of the schools and colleges and not all. Hope you all agree with me. And sure. teachers, teachers being made accountable for more than they should. So it is something a teacher is not going to just teach alone. Okay. Though the task is, it is very noble. A good teacher never teaches. He or she makes the students learn. So that becomes a more of a psychological connect, emotional connect with your uh, students. And you, you are a shining star for them. So for such a noble profession, the challenges which I encounter to the best of my little knowledge, I want to present it. Teachers being made accountable for more than they should. Not having enough time to plan. Sometimes some executive task will come. And some, some CEO audit is there, some uh, CEO visit is there, or some other uh, this is there, that is there, like that. There are so many stress. You used to face it, right? Right? So, excessive, yeah, excessive paperwork for data collection. You know, some other, sometimes, in order to build, I mean, reliable statistics, school and district administration, and the teachers compile large amounts of data, such as grades, student growth, collaboration. Teachers have difficulty with this because of additional time it requires and the fact that once again it takes precious time away from preparing quality content to them. So these are the common things and two more factors, major factors, keeping up with the expectation of school or college admissions. This is again a challenge. So these all challenges amidst all this, without resilience, how will you survive? So let us see how the resilience factor is going to help you. So another factor which is going to make you born out is applying a prescribed curriculum to all type of students. I still remember some of our professors. We used to listen in our first year, and when we go to the second year, the first year students listen the same stories. Same stories. Keep on and on and on and on and on. They like a like a like an echo speaker, they used to I mean prescribe the same curriculum to all, to all types of students. It, 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 it will not work. It may there are some change processes needed. So this is one of the challenges teachers are facing. And now, what are the effects? These resilience give out eight warning signs of teachers' burnout. My dear, uh, I mean, friends, uh, I hope this is very important for you to listen. Keep you frustrated, lack of fulfillment, overwhelmed, feeling overworked, and at, uh, and at the end of, uh, I mean, my... I mean, you see the slide clearly. Yes. Feeling drained, feeling drained emotionally, physically, sleep troubles. You know, there are a lot of teachers and professors, they have sleep troubles. They use to self care. They don't have the time to take care of their, their physiological, their body, physical wellness, mental wellness. This social interaction, all complaints will arise. I hope you all agree with me. This, these things we also undergo during the time of strenuous work or any accreditation, you have also some accreditation pressure, right? Yeah. yeah. Teachers without resilience, what will happen? Less effective teachers, loss of organization, decrease the health, reduce the self-confidence and self-esteem, decrease the responsiveness to students academically, behaviorally, emotionally, damaged personal relationships. These are all the commonest effects without residence teachers. Hope you agree with me, right? 100%. Thank you very much. Now, I'm going to give you 10 steps. Please note it, my dear friends. This presentation, moderators, you can share to all the teaching community, which will help to some extent, okay? So what are the 10 steps to personal residence in a chaotic climate like this? Number one, you need to be systemic irrespective of whatsoever happens in life, my dear friend, you need to be living with your body, mind, energy, and emotions, right? So, first thing is, systemic, accept the problem and its severity. Always remember here, don't take things seriously. 
but take me that's a difference between these two entities. Hope you agree with me. Accept the problem and its severity. Acknowledge my part in the problem and its solution. Can you hear me, Sanvisa? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So, surrender. Second thing is surrender. The surrender is a noble quality. Surrender doesn't mean that if you're a coward, I act not. No. It needs courage. It needs courage to accept things the way they are. Okay. So, surrendering here means practice sitting with uncertainty. The government clearly said, start to do with Corona. Okay. So, what is that you're going to do? So, practice sitting with uncertainty. Confront your own morality and morality of all. Okay. Number number five, it is called uh, I mean feel my feelings. You always should have an empathy for your own self. So this is called a shadow work. Do inner work by thyself. See these things, even in train the trainers, many people fail to address this point. That's why that empowerment factor is lacking in this community teaching. Self-care. Take breaks and rest when needed. There's a staff room for that. Even I, I still remember, I still remember my school days. There's a staff room for uh, teaching from my faculty. There's uh, some relaxing place. And they can relax, they can read, they can watch TV. Take enough breaks and rest when needed. Develop awareness of brain pattern and perception. For this point, I will address a part of my presentation. How the self-care can be achieved. Number nine, action. What is the action here? Irrespective of whatsoever happens, make up, dress up, talk. This is very important, my dear. Reinvest into problem solving efforts. Always try to reinvest. If you want to learn something new, or do you want to, I mean, uh, empower yourself through some noble coaching, or you to go, go, go for yoga. There are a lot of methods which I will address later. Okay. So, <laughs> what is this business going to be? I'm going to give you the benefit part of this resilience. Resilience, okay? It gives you high self-esteem. It gives you flexibility. It enhances strong relationship. It gives you the spiritual freedom, a positive coping strategies, emotional regulation, mindfulness, and a non-judgment. My dear friend, the problem with people around the world is they are all very judgmental. They, they don't see things the way they are. They don't accept things the way they are. All they want is, all they want is, they want things the way they want. They want the universe to act in tandem to their views. Does it happen ever all the time? No. Never. So, with a non-judgmental mind, the non-judgmental mind, see things the way they are and accept things the way they are. This solves 75% of your problem. Your stress will be reduced. The resilience is maintained and it, it will be kept intact by the effects. And some more tips to improve resilience. Okay? As I told you, any profession is noble, each profession is a notice. Find meaning. Every day before you go to work, find meaning. What is that am I doing? I am doing, am I doing a purposeful thing? If your job is not, there is a difference between job and career, my dear friend. Job factor is, will help you to pay your bills and manage your day-to-day -day living. Career is something which you love. I hope this profession of teaching, this is not by chance, it is by choice, right? So, you need to find meaning to improve resilience. Get connected. Be a connecting person, not a disconnecting stuff. Start laughing. How pathetic it is. Now people are having fun club, laughing club. They, they just gather together and then they just keep on laughing. We have been so mechanical all these days. Our ancestors did have this problem. They were living happily till the age of 85, 90, walking and be very enthusiastic and very energetic at that time. The reason why, because there is no such mental worry. Even though they had 10 children, our great grandmother, grandfather, they had 10 children. But now, having one or two, you are feeling worn out. Why? So, because we forget to look in, 
inside. We want to fix everything outside, we forget our inside. So this is the reason. So some tips to improve the resilience, learn from experience, not from your own, from your colleagues, from any books, from incidents. Be around, be an open-minded person. Remind both. One important factor is understand. Never ever give up, never ever lose your hope. Remind both. Take care of yourself. These are some of the tips. And some of the tips are going to continue. Because an organized way of working is going to reduce half of your challenges. So keep a journal. I still remember many of my teachers, my eighth standard uh, school teacher, he used to have a small diary, a small pocket one, you know. Those days we it's available, right? So he used to have and he writes his task. He writes, he keeps a journal. So it helps him to rejuvenate. So that learning I got it. I still keep a small, now these days we have smartphones. We have all these notes. We forgot the I mean, uh, habit of writing. I hope many of you will accept. So accept and anticipate change. In this world, what is change alone is permanent. Okay. What we studied in the late 90s, is it, is it, is it helping you? Or have you undergone any empowerment training? Have you cope up with the new digital era? If you don't upgrade yourself, you will perish. So, accept and anticipate change. Work towards a goal. Goal doesn't mean that doing big mammoth things. No. A short, simple, smart goal. Today, I must make my students happy. They must feel so good for one hour. I must enjoy my teaching. I am very practical. I am very jovial. And like this goal, you go daily. Today I make my kids happy. You know, the I'm going to I'm going to give some few things he or she wants. I'm going to spend more time like this. Like this. What was the goal? I'm sorry. The G Shri has muted that you okay. can proceed. Okay. Take action. Action here means instead of contemplating on things, I will do this at the age of food. I will do this at the age of this. Who knows? Tomorrow is not an assured one, right? So take action right now. Maintain perspective. Always. Practice stress management and relaxation. Here I want to give you some useful things. How many of you are practicing the habit of at least investing one hour out of 24 hours a day, one hour for your physical fitness? That one hour, my dear friends, I will give it in writing. Trust me that investment of one hour is going to give you full energy and happiness for the at least 18 hours of your day. There are so many methods and tools available around the world, around the globe now. Be it any place, be it a remote village or the past town, it doesn't matter. Be it your own hall, practice yoga, yoga or some mild exercise where you sweat and you see the freshness for the day. That is going to change a lot. I have practically, I mean, experienced it and sharing it with you, my dear friend. Some other tips. Some proven resilience strategies for teachers. What happens once a teacher is having a resilience? He personalize difficult events. Okay, always don't personalize things. Okay, he personalize. Assess what happened. Don't judge. Don't judge or jump into conclusions without any plan. Be supportive of four of them. Be a helping person. Have sympathy. Have empathy. Acknowledge times when you could have performed better. These are all the proven resiliency strategies from teachers. We are after some experiments. Dr. Johnson had did this experiment in the United States and he had given us a lot of tips. I will share the resources in the later part of the presentation. Some other proven strategies. Looking at events from students' point of view, that's very important. See, you may have a big, I mean, uh, homework done. Then you had done extensive research, but that doesn't matter. When it comes to your students, be an open mind person. Look at events from students' point of view. Daring leadership is very important. Those days were gone. The bossism, the so called autocratic leaders, that era is gone. So have a daring leadership. Continue learning behavior management. That's very important. 
See, for this presentation, I did some homework and I came to learn a lot of things. I realized what I did in the past. Now, how I'm going to change myself? It's going to change my career tremendously. Okay. Old school behavior management studies. These are all some proven resiliency. Resiliency strategies for teaching. Okay. Some five levels of resiliency. See, my dear friends, note this level one maintaining your emotional stability, health, and well being. This I already told you sometimes later, sometimes back. Without, see, many of you are early morning risers, right? Many of the teachers, I mean, uh, they start from morning five. I hope you will agree with me. So, maintain your emotional stability by keeping your life energies intact and try to connect yourself with nature. See the sunrise. How many of you have the fullness to mind that you see the sunrise fully? Honestly, test yourself. I'm going to have a test at the end of the presentation. Don't worry. Okay. So, maintain your emotional stability, health, and well being by doing exercise, by doing yoga, by connecting yourself with nature. See the instant, irrespective of your air conditioned air, go out and see, connect with the natural air. My grandfather used to say that in my uh, hometown, when we go to the upstairs, uh, I mean our terrace, and we stand for a while, my grandfather told me, the cost of this air is one lakh. What? My language they say, what is that Vorvachuvaka? I asked him. What is that one lakh they asked about? I asked him, this is a natural tree from the nature. You have this a lot of wonderful reasons in your room. Did that make you happy? Be happy or this? So try to connect your nature. Focus outward. Strong sense of self. Level three. Concentrating on the inner world. This inner world connectivity. There is a very good saying in our Tamil language. So the whole universe is inside you. You can create a universe for yourself. Concentrate on the inner world. Strong sense of self. Level four. Well developed resilience. Resilience systems. Um, level five, a talent of changing bad fortunes into good life. You know the word serendipity. There are a lot of uh, proverbs about this. How to change a bad situation into a good life. Here I am I am reminded of one uh, wonderful statement. An optimist always sees opportunities in calamity. A pessimist always sees problems in calamity. I mean problems in progress. So how do you want to be that you are be an optimist or a pessimist? These five levels of resiliency. Now also to improve resiliency, what are some things as I told you? Okay? Remind hopeful, the same thing I think uh, the same slide is repeated. Sorry for that. Get connected, keep a journal, find meaning, accept and anticipate change, learn from experience, remain hopeful, work towards a goal, maintain perspective. Now, are you all ready for a resiliency quiz, my dear friends? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't see. Even, even in person when we are giving seminar, people will doze off. Now it is a remote webinar. I don't know how many will sincerely listen. Okay. So this is a research done by, developed by Al Siebert. Okay. So this is going to really help you. Please uh, take note of it. These are some 20 questions are there. Rate yourself from one. It's a five, it's our five point scale. You rate yourself. Okay? In a crisis or chaotic situation, I calm myself and focus on taking you to action. How many points do you give for this? See, number, point number one is very little, five is very strong. You be genuine and be honest to thyself and give the rating. Okay? I think some, some audio this is very important. Okay, can you meet? Can you mute? Uh, more the participants don't press the mute present now button and also sure. don't press the mute button. Thank you. Okay. So, are you with me? Are you all with me? Yes. Okay. So, 
rate reversal on a, on a five point scale, one being very little, five being very strong. You need to be honest to thyself and start to give rating for yourself for the following questions. First question I said, in a crisis or chaotic situation, I calm myself and focus on taking peaceful actions. Many of us are very good at that. Some are, they start to complain, they start to grip, they used to yell at their husband or wives or kids or co-workers or some go silent or some go crying and all that. Okay, what type of person are you? You just rate yourself between 1 to 5, okay, between 1 and 5. I am usually optimistic. I see difficulties as temporary and excess to overcome that. This is the second question. You give a rating for yourself. And I can tolerate levels of ambiguity and uncertainty about situations. You give a rating for yourself. And now, fourth question. I adapt quickly to new developments. I am good at bouncing back to You give a rating for yourself. I am playful, I find the humor in rough situations and get laugh at myself. There is nothing wrong in having a good joke, you talk to yourself, that, that technique is called soliloquy, a technical term. You talk to yourself, you stand in front of the mirror and ask yourself if there is any chaotic situation. I used to stand in front of the mirror quite often and ask myself, as being a chief executive officer, how are you going to justify your role? Are you a leader? Are you a positive, optimistic leader? I used to ask this question. It really helped me. It's one of the beautiful resilience factor. Okay. Resilience factor. And now, six, I am able to recover emotionally from losses and setbacks. I have friends I can talk with. I can express my feelings to others. Ask for help. Feelings of anger, loss, and discouragement don't last long. This is a wonderful point. For all these points, between 1 and 5. I feel self-confident, appreciate myself and have a healthy concept of who I am. I'm curious. I ask questions. I want to know how things work. I like to try new ways of doing things. I learn early to listen from my experience and the experience of others. These are all the questions, my dear. I am good at solving problems. I can use analytical logic, be creative and use practical common sense. Irrespective of voluminous or pedantic theories, you need to be very simple, practical, reliable, smart goals you should have. I am good at making things work well. I am often asked to leave groups and projects. You see, many of the students, some students are chosen by the teacher to lead something, to be the house leader, you be, you be the greenhouse leader, be the squad leader, you be this something like that. I am flexible. I feel comfortable with my paradoxical problem. I am optimistic and pessimistic. Both. You give a rating for this. Trusting and cautious, unselfish and selfish, and so forth. I am always myself, but I have noticed that I am different in different situations. This is very important. I am different in different situations. Okay? Now, these are all some questions. I prefer work without a written job description. I am more effective when I am free to do and I think it's the best in any situation. Can you hear me? Yeah, I read, I read people well and trust my intuition. These questions, these definitely these questions, I don't know how many of you already had done this homework. If you don't hear that, it will be definitely helpful, my dear friends. I am a good listener. I have good empathy skills. For each question between 1 and 5, you just give your rating. I am non judgmental about others and adapt to people, people's different personality sense. Right. You know, are we behaving the same in all situations? No. It's a big no. There's a lot of factors, even affects the nature. The same thing, it is inside us our physiological, our psychological, our emotional, our financial, our social, our professional, our spiritual needs and wants differs from time to time. So, when a person is so sweet today, don't expect the person to be so sweet at all times. He or she may be like this. Vice versa, a student and a teacher, a student and a teacher's relationship, and also relationship at work, all these things have got their own impact. Okay? I am very durable. I hold up well during tough times. I have an independent spirit. 
underneath my boundary to be of work with others. For this, are you going to give 0.3 or 0.4 or 0.2 or 0.5? I have been made stronger and better by digital experience. I am convert, I have converted this fortune into good luck and found benefits in this marriage. My dear friends, whole world, we can bifurcate our life into two ways, very simple two ways. Whatever happens in your life, that you can take it in two ways. Number one is a blessing, number two as a blessing. Both are needed in life. For teaching professions, to justify the topic of psych psychosocial resilience, I have put my best points now. Now, out of all these 21 questions, to total that. Okay? After totaling the resiliency quiz scoring, please understand this point. This is going to help you. Low score, a self rating under 50. So if your score is under 50, that's the pass mark. For nowadays, it's 50 marks out of 100, right? So, a self rating under 50 indicates that life is probably a struggle for you, and we know it. You may not handle pressure well. Don't learn anything useful from bad experience. You feel hurt. You may sometimes feel helpless and without hope. If these statements fit, fit you, ask yourself, would I like to learn how to handle my difficulties better? If your answer is yes, then a good way to start is to be others. Who are working to develop their residency skills. Talk to people, talk to gurus. A guru in the sense, a good psychological counselor, an experienced retired professor, a successful man, a successful friend, a successful colleague. Okay, let your work for a larger employer is to get residency coaching from a counselor with the employee assistance program. There are a lot of employee assistance programs in colleges, schools, in many universities. Okay, you can attend to that. The fact that you feel motivated to become more resilient is a positive sign. Okay? Now, if you are ready, it's lower middle score. If your score in the range of 50 to 59, you appear to be fairly adequate, but maybe underrating yourself. A much larger percentage of people underrate themselves than overrate themselves on the question. Some people have a habit of being modest and automatically give themselves a 3 on every item for a total score of 60. If your score is in the 50 to 69 range, you need to find out how valid your self rating is. Okay? Now, last but not the least, scoring is continued. Upper middle scores. If you are scored out of 21 questions, if you agree with many of the statements and scored in the range of 70 to 89, that's very good. It means you can gain a lot from reading and learning about resiliency and will become even more self confident and resilient than before. You are a self-motivated learner and can become better and better at bouncing back from adversities. Okay. Now high scores. If you rated yourself in a high on most of the statements, you have scored over 20, so 90. That means you know you are already good at bouncing back from life setbacks and hold up well under non-stop pressure. For you, the quiz validates many things you are doing right. And because you like learning new ways to be even better, so you how to how to take you already good skills to a very high level, something like reaching an advanced degree black belt in the martial arts. So be genuine, be honest, don't be modest, be honest in that 21 questions, and it will definitely help you to be a better resilient person, resilient person. A question for you to consider is how much you feel willing to tell your resiliency stories to others. Many people are not that much introvert. They feel shy. They feel gullible. They feel awed in sharing their resiliency experience to others. So how much you are willing to tell yourself resiliency stories to others and make yourself available to people who are trying to learn how to go better in their adversity to gain inspiration from real life role models. Please note that a validity check for your scoring is to ask two people who know you well. This is not a joke. You rate five for something, and if your husband rates for three, then the average is four. Okay. On the item, and see what scores they come up with. Have a discussion with them about each of the items. Where there is a discrepancy, and listen to what they say. These are the ways for our beloved teaching teachers, professors, 
college lecturers how to have psychological psychosocial psychosocial resilience and uh, hope this will help and uh, with the little knowledge and my experience i have presented this to your friends and now it's time for you to ask questions and very well available to address to some of the few questions once again i must thank uh associate sir professor sanmista uh principal madam and the hod of the economics department of ekapur college for giving me a wonderful opportunity to share my views and experience with you in all this 22 years of healthcare hospital management i thank you one and all at the various sources i used to make the presentation is uh, joe cruz an international school teacher from minnesota from minneapolis from minneapolis usa and uh, the joy in teaching founder dr tiffany car so there is a website called joy in teaching please go through that there are a lot of resources available and with this brief note i would like to conclude my presentation thank you very much my dear friends thank you sir yeah yeah Start us to access ourselves. You can take us to places where we are, where we have moved. Yeah. There's a lot of meanings your uh, sessions are on. So, oh, oh, yeah. Ask me some some question is there. Deepa, Diksha, Radha, Shubhashina, how to deal emotional weakness? Sanjita, man, what are you doing? Come on, come on. Hey, Tara, what question is there? Sanjita, man. Please listen to the audio. Sorry, in the chat box. Ah, chat box. Sorry, I have forgotten. What's the name of the book you mentioned? Let me get it. Ah, that. I am going to give you. Ah, ma. The the book is. It is not a book. It is joy in teaching. It is enjoy the joy in teaching. Okay. So that is the book. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thank you very much. Huh? Hello. <laughs> Okay. So how to deal with irritating person? Irritating person. Okay. Let me tell you one thing. See, my dear friends, there is nobody can irritate you without your permission. Must understand this concept. We should not give the privilege to others to make us angry. Okay. We have to keep the privilege to ourselves. It is very important. It is not the other person is hurting. Taking the words into your mind and you start to digest and do all your limits and get irritated by yourself. This is a fact. This is a psychological fact. So never say that somebody is irritating. Your own mind is irritating towards the person's words. This is the truth. Okay. So never give the privilege to others to make you angry. Okay. You keep the privilege to yourself. That's a great emotion. You always try to exhibit sweet emotion with people. that is the way to evolve yourself to enhance your receptiveness to enhance your receptivity that is how things will work my dear friends hope i have answered your question ma'am and uh, so what do you think of undue advantage of your sentiment oh sentiment again uh sentiment undue advantage of the yes this has to be properly dealt with actually you need to be an enigmatic person and your feelings and emotions are very worth very worthy not that cheap things to share with okay so the be an enigmatic person at the same time like a mother's love to kids have you ever noticed this you being a mother you will be very rough and rude at times with kids at the same time you will be so much loving and caring that roughness is due to the things that if you don't show you are don't don't show you are i mean uh, the bitter feeling the the the, the wards the kids will go in the wrong way right that's why you are doing like this at the same time you are loving so how you should not be a emotional business guy emotionally and emotional sentimental fool you need to be very strong by having a self reliance and self dependence that is the way to be it will help you okay I hope you have answered your question. Oh, yes. How to deal with politics against you in the educational institution? Very good, very good, very good question. Without politics, there is no institution. This world, man, but understand this, man. The politics of once 
why one person want to pull you down first understand you are first you are at the very first place you are ahead of them that's why they want to pull you back okay there is a famous thing there was a discussion between a bird and a bee okay and the bird was telling at a bee that you are doing a very hard work my dear bee okay you are collecting nectar from me and give the honey honey to people and people are very feeling it and they are holding you back okay and they are putting you in a bad way why are you doing like this who the flower was asking the bee you know what the bee said my dear flower when human beings can see the honey from me but not the technique you got the point now so why people want to pull you down because you are already ahead of them you are already ahead of them you are already better than them that's why they want to play politics so don't give a don't care a damn you do your good work just because of somebody is doing a nasty game to you it doesn't mean that you need to revert them back with the same kind of nasty blogging the whole world can be shaken right can shake the whole world in a gentle way so to avoid such things in politics you need to be self reliant self sustainable then only you can avoid such politics i hope your question is answered ma'am uh hello anybody there any more questions on the part of the site you can give your feedback also yeah the feedback they are the chat they are giving in chat i guess and i really appreciate your feedback can mr you can share my email uh, with uh, uh, the people to give the feedback okay yeah sure and also uh, you can because uh, i hope i hope i made justification for the last 45 minutes hello yeah uh, sir this is sanjay banwal hi sanjay yeah hello yeah i yeah. uh, uh, yeah, sir uh, it was very really nice on your part to uh, put such a wonderful uh, session boss sir i have a question and a problem also that how to maintain a balance between science and spirituality whatever you told sir most of the part of that deliberation is from spirituality yes. but nowadays what we find that in order to have online lectures or virtual classes we have to go for science yeah yes so how to maintain a balance between these two sir thank you sanjay thank you it's a very good question let me address that let me address that Okay, to maintain the the origin of science itself, its philosophy. First, understand. Do you agree with this, Sanjay Varanwa? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, of course. The origin of science is philosophy. So, the spirituality of we all are spiritual beings on journey. First, understand this fact. We are not just human beings. We are all spiritual beings on journey. Spirituality is not about the religion or God or anything. It is about going. What is you different from you are? Try to understand the difference. Sanjay, Sanjay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You have a grey coat. Is it? Of course. You yes. have a wonderful coat. You have a wonderful car. Yeah. You have a wonderful uh, job. Yeah. You have wonderful family. Yeah, of course. These are all yours. Yeah, yeah. But they are not you. Yeah. Try to understand the difference between what is you and yours. People are so much confused, and they they, they start to love all these things rather than loving people. This is not yes. you. Things have to be yours, and people are to be loved. <laughs> so this is not you. They are doing their work. You don't do the mistake. Start to first love yourself and yeah. see what is inside. It is resonating and vibrating in the whole universe. That's the truth. So, the sense of contentment, satisfaction, will come. Once that satisfaction comes, you don't even get a balance between the quality. You feel everything. It is a product of the outcome of love. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I hope.
very nice. A uh, very nice, sir. Thank you. Sir. Excellent, excellent, sir. Uh, please share your email ID so that I can uh, join you in future also, sir. Sure, sure, sure. I'll uh, um, Tamil sir. Of course, sir. Okay, Tamil sir, please share the email ID uh, to uh, feedback. People, uh, please, uh, they all are asking to share the feedback with me. Okay. Okay, uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, hello? Yeah? Yeah, this is Didi Mastiga from Armatu uh, Patis. So, oh, Didi Yeah, uh, I would like to thank you very much for this effective session. But uh, can you please suggest uh, a book relating to your topic? Yeah, yeah. see, actually, uh, I do read books, ma. This, but this time I got out of uh, out of the blue. This is uh, out of my subject, but still, stress management and resilience. I didn't read any book for this, but I can suggest you one website, Devi uh, Mahatma. It is uh, www. Joy in Joy in Teaching. Joy in Teaching. Uh, joy. Teaching. Yeah, Joy in Teaching. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, you. Yeah, you are welcome. Yeah. Uh, this is Bini Marin from Tamil Nadu. Hi, Bini. Hi, Bini. It was really wonderful to hear you speak, sir. It was really very informative. Uh, so, yeah, I have a doubt, sir. Many a times, like, uh, we show our love and affection to others, sir. Yeah. But the same thing, uh, we don't get it back. So, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Even from our close friends or relatives. So, is it uh, wrong to expect the same sir, from others? Very good question, uh, Bini. Okay, yes, I will tell you. I, I like to tell you a story. Sir. What happened in? Uh, you know Buddha, the Gautama. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gautama, the Buddha. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. You are walking on the street. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. On both the sides, you are seeing wonderful garden. Yeah. Or you, you stop by and you see one beautiful rose flower which is very fragrant and looking very really lovely. Yeah. So what do you do? What do you do with that flower? I'll just uh, look at it and smell it, I'll admire it. Hmm. Then? Then? I'll walk off, sir. Really? Are yes, you sure? Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I won't pluck it. <laughs> very good, very good, very good. Very good. Somebody yes. says that I will pluck it and keep it in my hand and go. <laughs> okay, now the difference, what Buddha says is when yeah. you like when you like the flower, you pluck it and have it and walk away. Yeah. When you love the flower, yeah. you just see the beauty of it. You yeah. forget yourself for a moment. If yeah. possible, if possible, you just pour some water, water yeah. to the plant and walk off. Yes. Yeah. So, answer to your question, love is unconditional, love is not a demand, you cannot demand love from anyone, it is not a demanding thing and you can't expect because you know what, just because you are, you are loving, you become a, you be the center of love, become a center of love, attract yeah. love so that the correct people will attract, get attracted to you. Okay, the wrong words will automatically leave from you. Don't expect the love from anyone. Be the giver also. Okay, sir. Receiving process starts from giving. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, this is Anshul from Chandigarh. Uh, this is Anshul Mehta. Yes, Anshul. Yeah, from Chandigarh. Sir, yeah. uh, first of all, very thankful for this beautiful session, sir. And I have one question, sir. Uh, like, how to deal with the people when we know they are making us fools? Even we know the things are going in a wrong track. They are making us fool. They are just telling us lies. We know the truth. We know the actuality. Still, we have to deal with them. <laughs> how to deal with these people? Okay. Once again, you rephrase your question. <laughs> yeah, I mean to say, uh, sometimes we ha have to deal with the people. Like, we know they are telling lies with us. They are making fool of us. They are doing the things which are not positive for me. Even though we have to deal with these type of people. How to tackle uh, this type of people and how to deal in this type of situation? You take the role of a CBA officer then. Yes. Uh, when you know the fact, it is very yeah. interesting to listen to the lies once the fact is known. You know, that is like an interesting uh, a drama scene yeah. or a cinema scene. Okay. 
it is yeah. specific so that you will understand you don't retaliate don't retaliate and you tell the person okay. you tell the person okay. an open mind okay we know what really happened but we are going to give some time to realize that and wait for the patients Shraddha Kapoor is the important in life. Patience okay. and trust. Okay. okay. The person who dealt with you wrong over a period of time, a self-realization will come and they will change. Because you know what? Yes. People will be abusing you. Yeah. They will be testing your patience. Okay. Then they will be silent for some time. After that, they don't have any choice except to follow. That's it. Okay. <laughs> this is the process. This is the process of change. This is the process of change. Sir, is it the things are going on in the same manner in the personal life too? Of course. That's the same thing. We find this everywhere. Okay. Of course. Of course. Even, even. <coughs> when it, yeah. In terms of family, love and affection, you see people. Yeah. Change, yeah. change is very tough in the beginning. Okay. Messy, messy uh -huh. in the middle, messy in the middle. Uh -huh. But gorgeous at the end, but very gorgeous. But the uh -huh. question is, are you having the patience and okay. trust to walk through the process? This is the question. Okay. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. what, uh -huh. what, what, what Mahatma has started, first they insult you. They tell you our mail ID is shared in the chat box. Any more queries you can make uh, through his email ID. Okay, thank you. So once again, uh, uh, once again, once again, I thank the professors, all the teaching community, because you are making pillars of the nation. We must, we are all bow down. And I once again thank the organizers, the principal of uh, principal madam of SFM College, the HOD of the Economics Department, Commerce Department. And various budding, uh, I mean, uh, professors, teachers, and I hope it is informative. I can see the smiling face in Sanvista's face. I can see Sanvista smiling. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Once again, Ma. Once again. We are at the end of the session. Yeah. So I invite Dr. S. Grahalakshmi, Assistant Professor of Commerce, to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone present here. Gratitude is the language of heart and today I am here on behalf of the convener Dr. N. Nathal Ahmad, co-convener Dr. K.J. Sanvista Ma'am, organizing secretaries Dr. J. Jagdishwari Ma'am and Dr. A. Vidyashree to let my heart out to express my gratitude to all the persons who are known of today's international webinar marking the celebration of Ruby Jubilee of our department. First of all, I would like to take this opportunity Days on record of the happiest thanks to our benevolent management who always lifts our spirits and keeps us going, being our inspiration and aspiration forever. And we are being fortunate enough to be backed by our Madam Principal with a perfect logistic support and guidance in every We, the faculty of PG and Research Department of Commerce, express our high regards and deep sense of obligation to our senior teachers of our department who paved the, who paved the way for the majestic success of our department throughout these four decades. Our thoughtful times are also due to Saudamani Ma'am, head and associate professor of chemistry for her influential presence and address and gracious presence. Our high regards are due to our HOD Ma'am, in Ma'am for her unconditional support, standing with us at all occasions with utmost care and concern. We would like to propose a heartfelt gratitude for our guests of honor for raising today's program. We are grateful beyond measure, and thus we want to take this moment to thank the Sasigiran Moni Sir, Director, Center for Language and Research Studies, University, Pentitikan Sultan Idris, Panjan Malin. Malaysia, Barat Musa, for your August present. The but insightful thoughts by exploring the various aspects to be considered by the Higher Education Forum and the necessity to empower and enrich the students in the present student-centric higher education system using appropriate teaching and learning technologies would indeed guide us 
in this new normal state of affairs. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing your experience and expertise. Now, we are grateful to Accord. I have a sincere gratitude to Mr. B. Jayakumar, International Hospital Health Star Management Consultant, Astra DM Health Star Credit Limited, Nigeria, for accepting our invitation and for your valuable address for us on psychosocial resilience of the teaching community. Sir, you completely explore and listed the ways in which we, the teachers, can compete our challenges and build our resilience in the present psychosocial environment. Sir, being an instructor and a trainer, you just envision the role of our teachers in an absolutely clear and completely comprehensible manner. Thank you, sir. With your perfect proficiency, excellence, and incisive acumen. Thank you, sir. Uh, we, would, uh, we, would, uh, we have actually evaluated ourselves and we certainly bounce back with high spirits, identifying the various opportunities and the calamities as you, as you mentioned, and you never ever give up. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Finding words to thank the technical team led by Mrs. R. Basanti Ma for her dedication throughout these three months to make these virtual time meetings possible would be a top job. Thanks a lot, ma'am. I wholeheartedly appreciate and thank the participants from various countries for their overwhelming response, active participation, and inputs. Thank you, dear participants. With everything falling in the right place, we, the PG Research Department of Commerce, thank you all for being with us. And it's been an immense pleasure and pride. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I think uh, Samitha will write up or uh, what? Yes, sir. Thank you, Sir, what is the... Fulfilled the days of many 